Should you get a carbureted engine or the fuel injection? That's the question we're gonna answer. If you think of cars a long time ago, there were carbureted engines, everything is switched over to this fuel injection. The same thing has happened with motorcycles and then lawnmowers are now adopting us. But is it better on a lawnmower to have fuel injection? So that's the question we're gonna answer. Now on a mower, how do you know, so you're not as familiar with this topic, how do you know when you get to a mower if it's fuel injected or not? Number one, carbureted means it has a carburetor. A carburetor, always is going to have a choke. Now there are some kind of fancy systems out there where they call it a smart choke system where you don't have to pull up in a knob, but 99% of carbureted engines are going to have a choke. So we're comparing a couple bad boys here. We have a Kawasaki FX1000V. This is the carbureted model against an FX1000V, but it's the EFI version of what Kawasaki has. So if we look at this model right here, the one that's carbureted, typically on a lawnmower, there is a choke. Usually it's on this panel. The way that bad boy does it is they tuck their choke on the left hand side. So this has a choke mechanism. So just the simple fact that when you're looking around on a lawnmower, if it's got a choke, it is carbureted. And that really is the first thing I think you need to think of in this battle is, do you want to be dealing with pulling up on a choke when you're starting it? It's not overly complicated. And typically on an engine, when it's cold, you will have to choke the machine. You are changing the airflow and giving the carburetor, giving the engine more fuel when you pull up on the choke because you're cutting off airflow. There is sort of just a moment when it's starting to fire up that you will flood the machine out. It won't run properly if you leave the choke on too long. So if you are engine illiterate or it's just something you're not familiar with at all, there's a bit of a process to pulling up on the choke, pushing it down at the right moments that you do get to avoid if you go over to the fuel injected system. The nice thing about this is I simply get to turn the key. So as far as starting your machine, it's a lot easier, I think, on the EFI. When you are in a colder environment, because think about the fact that I said this engine, when it's cold, you have to pull up on the choke. Depending on the temperatures outside, you might not have to choke this at all. You might have to choke it a little bit, might be a lot, but definitely in very cold temperatures. And it depends on how much that varies in your cutting season or if you ever have to move this around. We're here in Michigan, so you're not using your lawnmower in the winter, but sometimes you got to move it around or you get into fall and these temperatures kind of vary. And that's definitely when you need a lot more help with that choke. The nice thing about fuel injected systems are in very cold temperatures, they're gonna start significantly easier. We started with Kawasaki. Let's look over at the Kohler side with this exact same comparison and why it really matters on the two machines that I've got out there. So we're outside a couple of Kohler engines. So this is a Kohler Pro 26 horsepower. This one's a 26.5 Kohler Command Pro. Which one's carbureted? Again, I can look. So on this panel, there's no choke knob. If I look over here, there is a choke knob. So this is the one that's carbureted here. Why does it matter? This is a machine that is running outside of summertime. It actually does get a plow put on it at times. That's why for Toro, they're always putting this fuel injected model because there are these days in the winter that you gotta make sure it starts and you would not be wanting to deal with that nearly as much, you know, versus that fuel injected system. So think about what you have, even if it's not on a lawnmower and you're gonna be running that piece of equipment in temperatures that are lower. So we jump back inside. Everything I'm saying is positive about this. Now let's get to those negatives, right? Because I mentioned with positives, there comes negatives. Well, first of all, you're gonna have a difference in price point. You know, this versus this engine is probably a three to $600 difference. And that's typically the case with more cost up front there's also more components if you look at these two engines you look at the front side of this engine as far as the wire and everything comes to it you're going to have a fuel line that comes up here and it's going to have this fuel pump and it goes up into the carburetor it's pretty simple there's a lot of mechanical components that are in there efi stands for electronic fuel injection so you naturally have a lot more electronic components so when you look at this you get a fuel line that comes up and then eventually wraps around and it does go to another fuel pump another component that is needed but it's another component that could go wrong and also on the front of this, you're gonna look at this side of the engine and there are way more electronic components. How essentially does an electronically fuel injected system work? There are sensors all throughout that's measuring the temperature inside, the temperature outside, where the throttle is at. So there's all these sensors that are trying to time up this mist instead of going through a carburetor and all of that gets the proper amount of fuel. So yet another advantage over here is the fact that there's less wasted fuel in an EFI system versus the carburetor. It's because you're getting that exact correct injection of fuel, you're gonna get a lot less excess fuel that is burnt unnecessarily and you're gonna have a lot more fuel efficient savings. Depending on what engines you get, you know, 20 to 30% of cost savings on fuel. We've done an engine video that you can check out. You know, we even had that debate of like Kawasaki versus Kohler. So you could have a fuel injected Kawasaki versus a fuel 
injected Kohler. Kohler has got that down probably the best as far as the fuel efficiency. But we also talked about reliability, longevity, and all that. And we definitely really like Kawasaki's as well. So that's something to consider, right? You want to think of just simple reliability. So there's reliability between engine types. There's reliability differences between something that's carbureted versus fuel injected as well. We have a carburetor in the back and we have the throttle body. So these inherently different systems and how there's a mixture of fuel is something that I think we're gonna gain a lot of insight by jumping to the back of the shop. We're gonna to talk to Jason right now. All right, Jason, we've gotten above my head once again. Do you mind jumping in and explaining carburetor, what it does versus this throttle body? Cause we're talking carbureted and EFI engines. Yeah. So I know we were talking about it this morning, the difference here. So this is a carburetor. We just did something to a throttle body on a fuel injected machine. So explain those differences and then how essentially is the system working and you know pros and cons of each. And obviously part of this is a part, but it just kind of explain how this works here, Jason. Yeah, so basically with your carbureted engine, you're gonna have a pneumatic fuel pump that delivers fuel through this little inlet right here. From that inlet, it comes down through this little valve. There's a little needle that sits right inside that, that little valve right there. And then a float that goes on top of your valve. And basically what happens is when this bowl, this is called the float bowl, when this fills up with fuel, this float will essentially rise to the top like that. Once it gets to the top, it presses on that little needle and cuts off fuel supply coming into the carburetor. And then once this is completely submerged in fuel, when you're cranking your engine or when the engine's running, it's drawing fuel through these little jets right here. These are called main jets. And it comes up through the carburetor and mixes with air that's coming through this way and goes into the engine itself. You'll see you have two butterflies on here. You've got one on this side and then one on this side. This one here would be your choke. One's your choke, one's your throttle. So as soon as your engine starts, the throttle closes completely. And then as you throttle up, it actually fights the governor and opens the throttle just a little bit. Essentially, you're just opening little bits just like that. And then your choke, when you engage your choke, it just shuts all the way. And what that does is it cuts off air supply. And when you cut off air supply, that engine is, is still drawing the same amount of air. It still wants the same amount of air to come, into, yeah, yeah. to come into the motor. So when you shut that off, it still has to draw that, but it's got to take it from somewhere else because you're cutting off the air supply. So instead it draws more fuel, it richens the mixture, and that essentially is what starts your engine cold. And so with that system, they don't look like this, right? This is called a double barrel carburetor. So if it's a twin cylinder engine, it could have this this where it's essentially giving a different mixture for each side it's kind of completely separated not inherently different just everything's happening twice essentially in this yep. yeah. is there necessarily an advantage to a single barrel versus a double barrel i wouldn't say one's better than the other this one if you have one cylinder that's running weak or not running as well as the other your carburetor could be the culprit because it has those two separate jets if right. one of those jets gets plugged up or if one of these butterflies isn't working right or something that cylinder could hinder the the performance of that cylinder whereas a single barrel carb you have one jet one butterfly controlling everything so it would affect the entire performance of the engine as a whole. So it might be easier to diagnose single barrel compared to a, right. a double, just right. because there's a lot of other components that you might consider the, the problem if this starts acting up. And some of the engine junkies in here will probably like the fact that everything, again, we're not talking about the electronic aspect yet, but everything here is mechanical. You know, this float or just this raising up because of more fuel being in here. There's nothing crazy, crazy complicated. So as far as being able to work on this for someone who's not, you know, as familiar with engines, probably a little bit easier, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would say if you're a DIY handy kind of guy that likes fixing his stuff, carbureted machine might be, might be your go-to. If it's up to me, I'm choosing fuel injected because I have the tools to diagnose it. It's not difficult for me to figure out what's wrong with my fuel injected engine. There are a lot less maintenance to perform like a carbureted engine. So if you have the technologies, it simply is going to tell you what's going on. It's a matter of having the technologies to do it or your yes, shop exactly. that knows well, who's the shop. Maybe it's not even you. Maybe you don't like working on stuff at all, but you have a shop that you're confident that knows how to work on fuel injected. So what is the difference here You know, with this throttle body? versus what's happening with a carburetor. So with a throttle body, first off, you'll notice that there's no fuel inlet. There's no fuel going to this throttle body whatsoever. This this side here would bolt onto the engine and this is where your, your intake would be for your, your air filter. And the only thing on this really is just your butterfly, which this is why we actually replace this one because this is seized up. But that would work the exact same way as your carbureted, although that's the only component. The only component is just that butterfly right there and then it's got a TPS sensor, a throttle positioning sensor. As you throttle up, there's a little lever in there that turns uh, with the butterfly itself 
and that relays back to a computer along with external air temperature, engine temp. There's a bunch of different sensors that relay to the computer exactly how much and when to inject fuel, which would go through your fuel injector, which is actually up here. So there's no fuel going through this at all. Do you know is the injector spraying the same consistent amount every time, but we're changing the airflow mixture with it, or does it inject more or less depending on It's a combination. As you throttle up, obviously that butterfly right there opens and allows more air. But with mm -hmm. that, with more air, you need more fuel as well. But like take this one, so this is one that we had to repair in the shop. Is this something that a computer had to tell you this or simply you can still look and just see something from the outside that it's not working? Or how did you even diagnose that this one had that, that one this was, issue? That one was pretty mechanical. This machine came in, the customer said that it wouldn't idle down and it essentially acted like your governor was stuck and just revving way high. So when I got this in, I immediately just went to the throttle body because that's the easiest thing to get to. And I noted, noticed that was just super just stiff, seized, not moving at all. right up. Because otherwise it could have been this telling it the wrong, like yes. always saying yeah. to you yeah. know have more fuel, but you can do some mechanical things on this to see what's working. Yeah, this one is actually off of a multi-force and the multi-force, you can get a plow. Which so we I think, talked about in I this I think video. this was, this <laughs> machine was used to salt sidewalks or plow sidewalks and getting uh, some corrosion in there. And that's right. why this, this failed. Probably happened the same thing to a carbureted motor if used like that. So right. just how it was used. But at the end of the day, I would say that fuel injected is a lot less maintenance. I would prefer it because a carbureted engine, after a month or two of sitting, you could go out there and it doesn't start because it got a little piece of sediment or dirt or something in that jet. Can ethanol still cause issues in this? It can, but it takes a lot longer to cause issues like that. With this- You don't have fuel just sitting here in yeah. it all the time. Like exactly. this with the tiny exactly. Exactly. So when you park this after you're done mowing, it might have been your last time mowing and it sits throughout winter. This entire float bowl right here is completely submerged in fuel. All these components right here are just sitting in gas. And today's gas goes bad pretty quick. So within a month or two, that could cause some issues. The next time you go to start it, it could plug up these jets or maybe maybe your, your needle for your float sticks or something and allows this to flood out. Whereas if you have just your fuel injected, there's no fuel sitting in here. The only place that the fuel is sitting is in a gas line, which is designed to have fuel in it. So it's, it's so a bigger just, opening. Yeah, there's just a lot less to, I guess, more to go wrong with a fuel injected, but less chance of it actually happening. Okay. And that, you know, some of the stuff you're saying is another common question we get. I hear, you know, people when they're purchasing their lawnmower, should I go with rec fuel or should I add stabilizer? And typically what I tell people, it's like, it seems like in the shop, we see the most issues with carburetors. Certainly it happens on zero turn mowers and riders, but we see just tons and tons of weed whackers and things like that. The smaller and smaller that pole gets, which gets smaller carburetors, you know, and the other ones is when you have more issues and which one should I use? And if you just get regular gas at the gas station, it's got ethanol in it. What he's talking about when it sits for a period of time, over a longer period of time, it gums up to this kind of gel-like substance and that will block the hole. So typically what I tell people, especially on a riding lawn mower that has a little bit bigger carburetor than the smaller ones, I'm typically okay with people having regular gas in their lawn mower, not being as worried for that to happen because you're gonna go through that fuel every week. You're gonna be using that. I think it's when you get to the end of the season, like he just talked about that, do you switch to something that does not have ethanol in it, which is what you're getting with rec gas. Do you make sure that you run the fuel completely out of there if you have a fuel shut off or you run the fuel out? Those are things I would do. I personally am kind of the camp that why spend the extra money when you're running that fuel through it throughout the season and even less of a problem like he's saying, when you go to something that's electronically fuel injected. So that being said, thank you, Jason, because when it goes over my head is when I've got to come back to the shop. Hopefully that gave you guys a lot of insight between carbureted and fuel injected. Which one would you get? Did we miss anything? Tell us in the comments your thoughts. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.